Усинск Транснефть Что-то где-то эта линия загорелась Жесткое возгорание произошло Или утечка, что-то взрыв был Усинск Транснефть Что-то где-то эта линия загорелась Жесткое возгорание произошло Или утечка, что-то взрыв был U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has warned that an attack by Iran and Hezbollah on Israel could commence as soon as August 5th, citing Axios. The head of American diplomacy convened a conference call with close U.S. allies from the Group of Seven to coordinate actions and attempt a last-minute effort to exert diplomatic pressure on Iran and Hezbollah to minimize their retaliation. According to Blinken, limiting the impact of Islamist strikes is the best chance to prevent a full-scale war. Blinken emphasized that the U.S. is convinced that Iran and Hezbollah are planning retaliation. However, he did not specify what form this retaliation might take, compared to the attack on Israel on April 13, when Tehran launched nearly 350 drones and missiles at Israel. Tel Aviv, the U.S., and their allies worked together to intercept most of them. The Secretary of State said the U.S. doesn't know the exact timing of the attacks but stressed it could start as early as the next 24 to 48 hours, meaning as early as Monday. He also told his counterparts the U.S. is making efforts to break the escalatory cycle by trying to limit the attacks by Iran and Hezbollah as much as possible and then restrain the Israeli response. The Secretary of State appealed to the foreign ministers of the G7 countries, urging them to apply diplomatic pressure on Iran, Hezbollah, and Israel to maintain maximum restraint. One source who participated in the phone call reported that Blinken appeared disappointed in informing ministers about recent negotiations with Israel regarding the release of hostages in the Gaza Strip and a ceasefire agreement. He mentioned that before the assassination in Tehran, the White House was close to a breakthrough and that now a deal is needed more than ever. At the end of July, Hamas political leader Ismail Haniyeh was killed in Tehran. According to Western media reports, he was blown up in a building by Iranian special forces recruited by Mossad. On the same day in Beirut, Hezbollah military commander Fuad Shakr was also killed. Iran and Hezbollah have vowed to attack Israel in retaliation for these assassinations. Analysts at the Institute for the Study of War have noted that in order to use the F-16s that have arrived in Ukraine, the defense forces should focus on defeating Russian air defense in the Russian rear and on occupied Ukrainian territories with Western long-range weapons. Ukraine reported that it had received the first batch of US-made F-16 fighter jets. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky confirmed the arrival of the F-16 aircraft in Ukraine on the 4th of August. In this regard, he especially thanked Denmark, the Netherlands and the United States. The ISW continues to assess that Ukraine will need a substantial number of F-16 jets in order to field them at the scale necessary for Ukraine to succeed in integrating fixed-wing aircraft into its wider air defense umbrella. Ukraine will also notably need to continue efforts to target Russian air defense assets within the Russian rear and in occupied Ukraine with Western-provided long-range weapons to enable its use of F-16 jets. Experts have noted that Russian military bloggers 
have responded to the arrival of F-16 jets by attempting to minimize their potential impact on the battlefield. This response undercuts Russian propaganda efforts which have sought to depict the delivery of F-16s and other Western weapons as a critical and unacceptable red line. Several Russian bloggers have stated that the Western and Ukrainian media are exaggerating the arrival of the F-16s to deflect attention from setback on the battlefield. Many bloggers quickly shifted their focus to how Russian forces would aim to target and eliminate the aircraft. In the Russian media space, commentators and officials often contend that the supply of Western arms to Ukraine constitutes a red line which, if breached, would necessitate a heightened Russian response. Nevertheless, Russia has consistently shown that its invocation of red lines is a tactic to deter the West from providing additional military support to Ukraine. Western and Ukrainian strategies have crossed these self-declared Russian red lines multiple times since the full-scale war began without provoking a substantial Russian reaction. Statements from Russian military bloggers indicate that this trend will likely continue with the deployment of F-16s.